I like Dark Souls 2 a lot. I played through it multiple times, and I'm gonna play through it again. That being said, every time I boot up the game, I'm reminded of what my first playthrough was like. In the first area of the game, I get hit with some ganks, I got blown up by explosive barrels, I got punished by the Punisher, and I got my ass kicked by Armored Dennis. Cool. I'm used to that. I like that. There were some things I didn't like so much. For instance, what the hell happened to my health bar? Why am I getting hit in the middle of my rolls? Why am I seeing the same NPCs over and over and over again? It was a pretty crappy experience, partially because of skill issues, but also because of some of the game's design choices. As I made my way through, I found the game a lot more annoying than Dark Souls 1. In 2024, Dark Souls 2 still remains the most polarizing game in the Soulsborne series, and far from the only one who's had this kind of experience. Let's discuss why I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this game. We gotta start with the ganks, or the combat with multiple enemies at a time. Most of the negative feedback I see about this game has something to do with the ganks. Ganks aren't anything new to the series, they're in Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 3, so you know they're definitely in Dark Souls 2 and damn are some of them overbearing in this game. The enemies are a lot more aggressive than in the other games. The enemies will sprint at you and launch into lengthy attack combinations. Even some of the earliest enemies you encounter will launch into a barrage of three or four hit combos. I understand the reason for this change. If you've seen footage of speedrunners playing Dark Souls 1, you'll see them sprinting past areas without having to engage with the enemies at all. Here's a clip of me strolling through the Undead Berg. The encounters are basically optional in some areas. The changes made to the second game seem to overcorrect this a bit. Look at the Forest of Fallen Giants, the first major area of this game and you'll have to deal with this bullshit. It's basically a flailing wall of hurt boxes. And before you say it, yeah, I know, this encounter is optional, but you know, I, I just gotta fight everybody. Given the fact that your character is at their weakest, I usually find these ganks to be the most difficult to deal with in the entire game if you try to take them head on. If you haven't opened up the blacksmith at this point and are still using your starter weapon, good luck. It could take four or five hits to kill a single enemy. The first game has ganks early on too, but these enemies will die in two hits at most with their starter weapon. Look at the difference in enemy aggression here. I have so much room to analyze the situation and get an attack in in comparison. It's a tight space but the pressure from the enemies is manageable. This situation can be a challenge for newer players, as a third enemy will show up unexpectedly, but the other two enemies are pretty docile in comparison to what you'll see in Dark Souls 2. This gank in Huntsman's Cops can be total ass. When I first started this game, my strategy was to run in circles to deal with these guys. Worst area for this has gotta be the Brightstone Cove Tesseldora. Tesseldora... Seldora? Is that even a word? Fall down here and you'll be facing spiders, a basilisk, hollow mages, all while avoiding a big ass sand pit. You'll also get invaded on top of it too. The Belfry gargoyles have caused grief for many Dark Souls 2 players. If their damage per second is bad, you could be fighting five of them at a time. Once you beat them, optionally, you'll have to fight all these dogs. God damn it. Finally, when you're heading towards the Shaded Woods, you better clear some enemies out before you pull that lever or you're gonna be in real tough. To be fair, if you can get through your initial playthrough, there are a few ways of dealing with these. For example, in the Forest of Fallen Giants, just run past these dudes. These enemies won't follow you down ladders, so you'll have a clear path to get away. In Huntsman's Cops, a good strategy is to rush the first enemy to get him out of the way. It's a lot easier to deal with these guys if there's only a couple of them. Those Belfry Gargoyles? Do the unintuitive thing and let a bunch spawn. In Skullor the First Sin, their aggression pattern changes based on the number of gargoyles on screen. Check the Dark Souls 2 wiki for tips. And lastly, when you get to Brightstone Cove, for the love of god, take a torch for the spiders. The ganks are definitely manageable if you have some sort of strategy, but if you're like me and you try to take every enemy head on, you'll be in for a bad time. I had a shrunken health bar, a starter weapon, no iframes on my rolls, and I had to deal with this shit. I'm sure I wasn't the only one. The first time I played this, the Forest of Fallen Giants was the hardest section for me up until the Iron Keep. The difficulty curve in this game is a little bit all over the place. So I know I'm going to be beating a dead horse of this one, but we gotta talk about adaptability, or ADP. If you started Dark Souls 2 immediately after the first game, you're gonna notice your rolls are different. In Dark Souls 1, you become invincible for 13 frames if you're fast rolling, 11 frames if you're mid rolling, and 9 frames if you're fat rolling. In Dark Souls 3, you become invincible for 13 frames when fast rolling or mid rolling, and 12 frames when fat rolling. In Dark Souls 2, your starting character will become invincible for 5 to 9 frames during your roll, depending on the class you choose. 
You can increase your iframes by leveling up your adaptability stat, which in turn boosts your agility, which in turn boosts your iframes. Yeah, it's confusing. Every time I played through this game, I've had to use an iframe calculator to get my player's roll back to a reasonable level. To be fair, you can definitely beat the game without making use of the iframes in the roll animations, but you better know the enemy's movesets and hitboxes pretty damn well. I don't understand why they would want to make a core mechanic less usable in the early game. You're learning the game and the enemy's moves, why make it the hardest early on? Questionable choice at best. So the discussions about hitboxes in this game have been pretty spicy. You can see the threads on the Dark Souls 2 subreddit where people slow down footage of their players getting hit and debate whether the damage was justified or not. I think the hitboxes in general are okay, but this game has some bad animations and does a terrible job of communicating why you're taking damage. Starting with the Mimics, the Mimics in this game just have bad hitboxes all around. You don't have to be standing anywhere near the Mimics mouth to get caught up in it. The animations on the thrust attacks some of the bosses have in this game are friggin awful. If a single pixel of your character gets hit by one, your character is going to teleport onto the end of the sword. Don't let the last giant's legs graze your character or you'll take massive damage. While I dodged the dragon's stomp, I likely took some splash damage. You can see a little dirt puff, but it doesn't really correlate to where my character is. Look at the Taurus demon in Dark Souls 1. His attacks where he strikes the ground deal splash damage, and they're clearly indicated with a dirt explosion. There are also some times I'm surprised I haven't been hit. The throne defender seems to be showing me mercy here. Is he swinging over the top of me? The sword couldn't have gotten any closer to me here. Does this game just have amazing hitboxes sometimes? Jesus, I don't really have an explanation for this one. That spell hit me, right? Hello? Game? I've never been so confused as to if my player is going to take damage or not as in Dark Souls 2. I gotta keep my eyes locked on my health bar during the game to see if I'm taking damage sometimes. The dodge rolls are an issue too. If you mistime your roll a little bit or if your ADP isn't good enough, your character probably won't react anyways. In Dark Souls 1, if you get hit coming out of your roll, you will know it. While Dark Souls 2 expanded the directions your character could roll in while logged on to an enemy, it also introduced the ability to turn around completely while logged on. I don't like this. If you hold the roll button for a little bit too long, you're gonna turn around instead. I can't tell how many times I had this happen accidentally before I caught onto it. It doesn't happen to me much anymore, but it was another source of frustration in the beginning. We have to talk about the movement in this game too. This is one of the main reasons Dark Souls 2 feels so different to me. Maybe the movement is different on consoles, but here's my experience with the PC version of Scholar of the First Sin. If you press the joystick all the way in one direction, your character will remain still while they turn around. In the other Souls games, your character retains movement while turning around. It feels much more responsive. There also appears to be some points that your character likes to snap to, instead of allowing you to move in a complete 360 degree range. I don't see enough mention of how fundamentally different the movement feels from game to game. It's one of the biggest differences in my opinion. The NPC invasions in this game wear me down. You'll see more of these than in Dark Souls 1, and you'll see the same enemies over and over again. They're deliberately placed in areas that are already some of the most deadly in the game. Black Gulch is already terrible to go through. You want to invade me here? Manage to fight off the first invader? You'll get a second one before you get to the boss. I'm out of here. The same thing happens in Iron Keep. Make sure you don't die on the way through the Smelter Demon or the Tower Bonfire, or you're gonna face another NPC invasion. Forlorn might drop in to say hi too, so beware of that. Dark Souls 2 has also cut down on the rewards you get for killing these guys. In the first game, you get a nice chunk of souls, some humanity, and usually an item. Here you'll get a small amount of souls and a human effigy. There's a small chance an item will drop, but I went through the entire game and didn't get anything. We ain't found shit! I was excited when the NPC invasions happened in Dark Souls 1. There were unique characters that dropped some cool loot. By the way, you can get hit out of crossing a fog wall now, so you better be careful if you have someone on your tail. I am a fan of Armor Dennis though. He's a mean spellcasting bastard and he's got a ton of hyper armor. Fighting this dude feels like an introduction to fighting an Elder Ring mini boss, as there's a pretty small attack window. You really have to be careful when you swing your sword. Try to go for backstabs on this guy. You know what else irritated me in this game? Gravity. Yeah, you'll take more fall damage than in the other games. Look at the distance you can survive in Dark Souls 1. You won't get anywhere near that much leeway in Dark Souls 2. 
and it wouldn't bother me that much if the game didn't seem to be baiting you into making all these jumps. You'll likely fall to your death if you don't make this jump in the Forest of Fallen Giants. You'll definitely fall to your death if you miss this jump in Huntsman's Cops, but you're probably not going to miss it completely. Your character rolls upon landing this time around. You don't even have to jump for your character to roll. You can simply walk off a ledge and your character will roll. If I didn't have the Silvercat Ring equipped here, I'd be dead. Failing this jump in Brightstone Cove will send you into a quicksand pit. Look at this area in Earth and Peak. Seems pretty straightforward, but you'll roll into a bottomless pit of poison if you get the angle wrong. The best solution to these is to mash the light attack button prior to hitting the ground. It's just weird. I got a couple more quick things that bug me before we wrap this up. Hitting enemies on the ground can be a nightmare depending on the weapon you're using. The crystal lizards in this game made me want to pull my hair out. Come on, hit it! You ever notice how the arrows curve in the Iron Keep? Check this out. A lot of these topics I covered seem like nitpicks, and to be honest, they kind of are. I'm bringing them up because it's a combination of all these things that make the game feel like more of a slog than it needs to be. If I want to beat this game, I have to fight my way through the nasty ganks, I have to deal with multiple invasions in the same area of the game, I have to deal with figuring out why my character is taking damage, I have to deal with my health bar draining any time my character drops a trivial distance, I need to go through my inventory and pop a human effigy every few deaths. I need to carry a repair powder or a second weapon around with me because the weapons are made of glass. I need to carry an entirely different weapon with me because these crystal lizards are driving me up the fucking wall. These are on top of the issues that were already present in the first game too. Take the AI for example. In Dark Souls 1, you'll see the enemies losing aggro on you, flying around, getting stuck on things. Dark Souls 2 isn't any better in this regard. Look at these guys sprint away for no reason. Look at this guy sprint away for no reason. Why won't you fight me? It's frustrating to me because Dark Souls 2 is a good game that could have been a great game with a little more polish. I get the hype around it. I get why so many people are willing to defend it. There are a lot of things this game does better than the others. The weapon variety is better. The power sensing system is unique. The balance with stamina usage is better, particularly when compared to Dark Souls 3. You can't just roll spam your way through an encounter. I like that you level up faster than the other two games. You'll be gaining a bunch of levels each time you beat a boss. It's fun. It has a fantastic hub world. The bonfire aesthetics are an awesome addition. If you get good, you can get some cool items by upping the difficulty of an area. I hear players rave about the PvP in this game. I've had some good battles at the bell tower for the little bit that I've tried, and I'm sure there are many other good reasons that I missed. Do not skip Dark Souls 2 when playing the trilogy. Your first playthrough is going to be annoying, especially if you're doing a blind playthrough like I tried to do, but it'll also be a lot of fun and you might want to keep doing it. Let me know in the comments if you guys agree or disagree. Did I miss anything? Things that you love about the game? Things that frustrate you about the game? If you guys like this video, leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.